Buongiorno and welcome to this video, stage one from the new Z Racing series in December. Race like a pro. Here we go. Everybody is wearing the Ineos team kit because first stage is powered by Team Ineos. We are in London. The route is uh, London Loop Reverse. Um, I haven't ridden this route very often. I don't know, maybe once, maybe twice, but not more. So, yeah, I wasn't uh, sure or I didn't knew the climb very well. I think it's a Fox Hill. From the other side, it's a Box Hill. This one I remember very, very well because I did my virtual Everesting on this climb um, two or three years ago, I'm not sure. Um, I had to pick a climb that's, uh, that is not steeper than 7% because uh, in the beginning of my swifting career uh, I, I didn't have a smart trainer, I had a wheel-on trainer which was only uh, which was uh, couldn't simulate more than seven percent and then the r official rules from the everything say that uh, the climb is not allowed to be steeper if the trainer can't simulate it realistically so that's why I had to go I don't know how often the box hill up and down um, I can try to find it really quick on Strava so I see how often that was um, yeah it was very hard I think it was even harder than my outside Everesting last year it was also quite hard because it was <laughs> no joke the hottest day of the whole year or the second hottest day in Germany or at my town and it was so hot in the morning, I, I don't know when I started, at 4 I think in the morning when the sun came out in June, one of the longest days of the year. And it was so hot after 9 or 9.30 in the morning, there was so much sun in the first half of the climb. There were no trees, just through the fields, also a very short climb, only 100 and uh, I don't know. 50 or 40 meters of elevation so it I had to take uh, 69 uh, times I had to go up this <laughs> climb but I managed to make it in the dark the last three or four or five repetitions were completely dark and I forgot to bring my my light I had everything everything you could imagine what I thought I could maybe use in some case but I didn't expect it that it will take so long due to the heat that it will be completely dark so my dad uh, had to drive with the car behind me when I was going uphill and on the downhill he has to go in front of me so I could see something uh, yeah, very funny. Anyway, we are in the climb now. This is a Fox Hill. And you see, uh, I'm positioning myself quite far at the front. I'm also willed to do some work if I have to, because, you know, it's a time-based series. Uh, now you see Mr. Hobson, who, I don't know, I think this was like an attack because he increased his speed very fast you see over seven watts per kilogram so I don't know what what he tried to do he just uh, break the complete the whole field in um, you see it starts to stretch a lot um, so that was not very smart move um, so now I try to ride, ride with a steady pace at this moment you see there are no gaps behind me so I thought okay I'm going to do the work for for the other guys. Uh, you see at the bottom, it's 
<laughs> dark red, but it's quite steady. My pulse is very high already. And yeah, but now I see that there is starts a gap uh, to open to Jacek from Poland. Two seconds, so that's why I uh, get a little bit slower. Still over four watts per kilogram, but a little bit less. Pulse is very high, even for me, 215. And this was a mistake, I think, that I first tried to follow Mr. Hobson, and then the pace I tried to ride, wa to ride was a little bit too high. Um, so, <laughs> the last meters of the climb, it's almost half time now, or it's half time, so <laughs> quite far to go. I'm I'm quite suffering, and I'm not even thinking about to go to the front and do some work. I don't know if you will see this, see this in my face. At the moment I look quite relaxed, but I, I can tell you I was not relaxed. There you can see with a pink Tron bike, a Spanish guy, Sausan Corda. Uh, very good position in the, in the last series. Uh, Race Mercury <coughs> from the last month. <coughs> Sorry. Um, he took the second place in the GC with 2 hours, 90 minutes and 90 seconds. Um, so, yeah, I was sure that he will also be uh, one of the strongest riders uh, in this month's series. Um, there's Jacek with the blue Turkey's Tron bikes, so a lot of Tron bikes. Uh, I don't know what this is, I think this is a specialized, no, it's not specialized, I don't know. This is a Canyon. So a lot of different bike setups are riding arrow setups, so specialized S work wench with DT Swiss Arc uh disc wheels. Uh, yes, because there's only this climb in the beginning and then it's just downhill and nearly completely flat, but you will see. You see now that there are two riders who started to chase the British guy. So Hobson in front, then the Danish rider, Mr. Terson, and another British guy, Mr. Henley. Uh, yeah, now maybe you can see my face that I'm suffering. I'm sitting uh, not very uh, comfy on the saddle. I'm, I'm pendling to the left, to the right. I stand up, then yeah, you see it's it's absolutely not relaxed. Um, yeah, but I managed to stay in the group. I think we will be about 20 riders. And yeah, we are almost there on the mini map. You see 8% and in the background, the profile that we are almost at the highest point. So yeah, I said to myself, come on, keep on fighting when you manage to stay in the group till till the top of the hill then it will be compared to the first minutes so easy to stay in the front group till the end the downhill is uh, a very nice one not technical you can stop pedaling and then just super tuck from the top uh, until you reached the bottom of the climb of the uh, box hill. Um, yeah, we are still not at the official KOM banner. This is quite interesting. If you're not riding very often in London, but yeah, you see it on the mini map now. In the right turn, there's the KOM banner. And yes. I think there's two riders who are still away from the group. Have to be British and Danish rider, I think. But you will also see how fast they get caught in the downhill. Now you will see this automatic camera perspective change. Uh, I don't like it. 
in free ride, okay, this is pretty cool. But I think in the race this should be uh, turned off because, yeah, I don't know. You can't see what's happening very good. On the other hand, it's good for you maybe if you want to attack, but uh, I think it's you are at the top of a climb, so attacks wouldn't uh, come through, I think. So anyway, oh, let me make a short, short cut, but just a cut from the talking because I talked over 10 minutes and if I make a mistake or I don't know, uh, then I would have start to record again, so, <laughs> yeah. Okay, now you see it's time to super tuck. I think I will push once, a, one last time some watts, yep, th over 300, and then in the super tuck, grab my bottle, take some drinks, and now you can see how fast the heart, uh, my heart rate will come down until we we are at the bottom um, there are not so many details here in London it's very empty uh, I recognized also when we were going uphill so uh, a little bit sad compared to the uh, city of London with all the details also from real life these hills here are uh, yeah, built with not so much love I would say uh, yeah, but that's not important. Yeah, so you see, just super tucking all the time. Pulse is all already at 150, 55. Standing up a little bit, pedaling back backwards. Some deep breaths. <laughs> Yeah, sweating a lot. It's always very difficult for me in the winter uh, what I'm doing with the windows because if it's s very cold outside, uh, below zero degrees, then sometimes it becomes too cold in my room in the basement. Uh, for example, if I would have uh, let the window open on this downhill where I'm not pedaling for, I don't know, two or three minutes. It would be freezing cold. I have two fans. The one in front of me, I can... Uh, I have a controller, so I can turn it off from my from my bike. Uh, but my second fan is standing behind me. And this one, one I can't turn off. I have to get off the bike for this. Um, so I would get all the air, and the window is also behind me, so all the cold air would hit my back, and this is not very nice. So I, I kept the window closed, but then it was uh, and quite quite warm in the room. That's why I like it when, when my girlfriend or sometimes my dad is at home, or yeah, so... And they are sometimes watching my races, and then I can say, "Okay, can you please open the window for some moments? Can you close it now?" Um, okay, now some sprinting out of the uh, subway, the metro. Nothing interesting happened here. I just stay in the draft. Uh, by the way, on the on the top left corner, you can I I uh, record it also the uh, draft uh, numbers from source for swift so now 120 and 110 uh, this is the draft effect and now when you see when i come to the front or complete in the wind it's zero and yeah the maximum in the downhill was 700 um, we're not sure what what this means because it's in percent but with some guy from my team, Wattfabrik, uh, we made some some tests on Tempus Fugit, and we think this could be what uh, this, this your savings in absolute watts. 
but this is just a theory, but in our test it would make would have made sense. But yeah, no guarantee for this. But now for example 150 plus 180 would be 330. And I think 330 watts would be for me about 43, 45 kilometers per hour in the flat. So, yeah. But, as I said, nobody knows. Um, yeah. Another thing, by the way, uh, I, I managed to, to take the first place in the GC in the last series. I don't know if I said this in this video before. <laughs> if yes, and sorry that I say it twice, but yeah, I'm very, I was very happy that I managed uh, to reach my goal, or even better than my goal, I said, I think uh, I want to finish in the top 10 of the GC, and I knew if it's going very well, then I can also uh, finish on the, on the podium, um, but that it became the first place is, is amazing, it's, it's wonderful. Um, yeah. Last, last climb. Now you see, go to the front, make some pace. Not attacking like the British guy in the beginning of the climb. I just want to keep the pace a little bit higher. But you saw we were going very, very fast, uh, slow, <laughs> because nobody wanted to go to the front um, in the flats. I also never go to the front because I'm so light and I would waste so much energy. Um, but I think maybe there are a lot of lightweight riders because the climb was so early in the beginning. And um, now you see, by the way, a scene uh, why I like this uh, draft uh, numbers. Um, normally, with, without this, I would be... Uh, Surpri uh, not surprised, but I would think that uh, the gap starts to open and that I'm not in the draft and then that I have to sprint uh, for some seconds to close the gap, but you saw or I saw um, that I'm still in the draft and it is enough if I increase my my what my power um, and close the gap without sprint sprinting you see just some green and yellow at the bottom um, yeah. Okay, 2.5 kilometers to go, just a little bit of flat roads here at the river. And then it's a uh, quite technical finish. Uh, slightly uphill through the tunnel. And then the finish, oh, I'm not sure, I think it's a little bit downhill, but we will see, we will see. Um, no power-ups, by the way. I really like this. I think it was enabled by by the race organizers. I think in this case it, it's uh, a good decision because you have only one opportunity to grab a power-up. Um, yeah, so it could be unfair if someone, someone grabs an arrow and another one just get XP points. In races where you have more opportunities I I think it's okay if you if you have power ups or you make it like in the tiny race series that everybody always grabs the same power up and gen then it's just about um your strategy and when you use it <coughs> so yeah like I said a lot of tron bikes another one with arrow set up yeah I would recommend the uh, arrow setup if because you saw it's just in the beginning there's this climb and normally in the beginning your legs are fresh and I think it's it's good uh, manageable to to stay in the fr at the front group and then you have a big advantage on the downhill and also in the finish our finish is quite slow you see, only 35 kilometers per hour. Nobody wants to go to the front. I was thinking about attacking at this point because we were so slow for this big or for this group with over 24 riders, I think. 
but then I remembered that I was already in the deep red numbers at the climb at the beginning, so um, yeah, I was riding um, yeah the bo the boring way, <laughs> but yeah, maybe in when I race it once or twice again this week, then maybe I try an attack here. Uh, now we see another one attacking. It's a Canadian guy, Mr. Dupas. Um, um, um. I close the gap. It's way too early to go to the front. Fabien Dupas will finish on the ninth position. And then another German guy, Till Balle, Ballhause. He's searching for a team, Swift Power says, so if anybody's interested in German rider, you can write him. <laughs> okay, now I let the group in front of me to get in the draft. You see, 200% drafting. And now I still don't want to come to the front, and now the Polish guy, Jacek, starts to sprint. And I have to go all out, and now I'm not perfectly in his draft. I... I Hoped to uh, go more directly behind him, but it still was enough. Very close, 0 0.095 seconds, but yeah. So it was a win in the first race, 21 minutes 11. Um, but I think there will be much better time th this week. Maybe I will be in one of these races and yeah. See you soon, guys. Have a nice evening. Right on. Tschüss.